Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to set up my very first month of 2021 in my bullet journal and the theme is Belgium. Thank you to everyone who did vote. And as we said, Belgium is the winner this time. So I'm starting on my annual calendar at the front of my book where I'm just filling in the flag at the base of January. So that when I look back at the end of the year, I'll see every flag of the countries that we metaphorically visited this year. Okay, and then once that's done, it's time to move on to the cover page. Now, I always love to start my monthly sections with a painting or something on a separate piece of paper to give it that thickness that acts as kind of like a bookmark for each month. So I'm doing this month's cover page on a watercolor paper using my watercolors and my fine liners to do a very, very cute picture that I found of Bruges, which is a medieval city with cobblestone streets and beautiful canals. It reminds me a lot of Venice. And funnily enough, in my research, I found that it is sometimes called the Venice of the North. So yeah, if you're getting that kind of vibe, that would be why. So apparently there's over 80 bridges across the canals in Bruges and it just looks gorgeous. All the building structures, I just really loved the look of how the buildings came and I, the thought of drawing them really excited me. So that's how I knew that I wanted to do this for my cover page. And so if you've been following me for a while, you will have noticed that in each cover page on my months, I like to put in a girl um, who's traveling. So we call her my traveling girl and she's always not really colored in. And then the surroundings have that pop of color, which I really enjoy doing. So I thought I'd continue doing that through 2021. And so here she is standing in front of the canals with her bike. I just think that would be like such a beautiful little trip to go down and ride around all the old streets. So that's definitely on the bucket list. This place looks absolutely gorgeous and yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed researching it. So I've learned a lot. So I'm hoping to share some of that knowledge with you guys as we go through the setup. So the way I did my cover page to start was just map it out with my pencil first. And then I go in using this Pigma Micron. This is my go-to pen that I use for fine lining in my bullet journals because it is water resistant. So I'm putting that on first and I'm trying to do it as loosely as possible, but also quite detailed if that makes any sense. So I'm still doing very intricate like detail in thins, but I'm just trying not to perfect every line. You know, there's no like rulers for the straight lines except for that horizon. Yeah, and just kind of trying to be relaxed with it, but still achieve a certain amount of detail. And then once I'm happy with the pen sketch, that's when I'll start to go in with my watercolor. And I've made some choices beforehand, just knowing that I would try and do minimal and very like unsaturated color choices. So I tried to just keep these like warm, rusty kind of browns that I saw in the image. And I knew I wanted to use this, this yellow because there's like one building that stood out for me, which is in a very mustard yellow. So I knew I wanted to include those two colors and then just hints of green. Um, and then the rest was just quite muted and sort of like soft, warm grays and like a very pale blue in the sky. So I didn't want to get overpowered with the color. And I think that's why I'm really happy with how it turned out because it doesn't look too, too bold and in your face. It's very like soft. And I think that's kind of the effect that I picture for Bruges as well. What's good about doing these cover pages on a separate piece of paper as well is you can really, you can build up the layers. So you don't need to worry about the amount of water that you're putting down onto the paper because it is proper watercolor paper. It's absolutely fine to build up those layers the, the paper will withstand it. So to do watercolor in the journal, I still want to go quite light with my water. You don't want to saturate the paper because it will naturally bow. I also bought a new brush recently, which I'm using in this, and it's like a mop head brush. And it's so nice to use with watercolor because it doesn't give you any definite shape when I'm putting it down on the paper. It's quite like a sort of a soft oval shape that you can create. And then I made the trees here. I was able to sort of stipple those trees on and it was giving me lots of different shapes. Sometimes if you use like a pointed brush, it'll only sort of give you angled strokes or sharp points. And it's just hard to get that kind of natural look with it, but I was really loving using this brush. So I'm glad I made that little, um, little impulse buy. It was a good one. And lots of points in the process. I thought, oh, I should stop here because, you know, I don't want it to become too, too much color. Um, you know, and like there's this warning bell that goes off in my brain saying you should stop now. But I usually never listen to it and I keep going because I can't handle it. And so I kept adding color and I kept building up 
the layers and you know just the little highlights in the like the reflections of the windows and things like that and I'm glad I did I'm glad I went with my gut and just kept going because um, yeah I'm really happy with how it turned out and so once the painting was completely dry I pulled up the masking tape from around the edges and then went ahead and added some highlights here and there with my white gel pen um, this is always just easier to do with a gel pen rather than trying to use the white gouache. Um, I think it gives it a stronger, like a very opaqueness to it and just kind of finishes off the piece. Now the size that I like to work on for my cover pages is going from the first dot on the left page to the last dot on the right page. So that distance is 260 millimeters. So that's the length of my painting that I created. And then the height of it is 195 millimeters. And then I just slice it straight down the middle. And then that gives me like a perfect sort of rectangle that fits within my page with just a little border around the edge. And then the other side, I always love to include a Dutch door. So a Dutch door is where you're cutting around an element to reveal the page beneath. Um, and I think it acts like a little bit of a bookmark and it just adds a little bit of interest to the page. So I do that here by cutting around the two houses on the right hand side so that that top right corner becomes my January title page that I can write on the page beneath it. Now another little thing that I love to do on my cover pages is try and include the month name somewhere in the sketch or somewhere in the painting. And sometimes there's an obvious spot for it, other times it's a little bit more tricky and you have to kind of get a little creative. Um, so this time I thought I would create a little sign that's hanging from the railing that she's got her hands on in front of the canals. So because I didn't do it within the painting part, I sort of left it till the end. I'm just using a little bit of a white sticker to stick onto the, onto the drawing and then I'm just writing the word January on top. And I really love how that turned out. So I'll have to remember that in the future. <laughs> And then finally in the section beneath on that other page, I'm just going to put the letter J to symbolize the January. I don't need to write the full word because I've already written it on that little sign anyway. So I'm just choosing a really nice curly cursive calligraphy style J just because I feel like it goes with the design style of the buildings. It's quite old fashioned. And also it's going to go a lot with what I'm about to put on the calendar page as well. And there's the finished cover page. I must say this is one of my favorites so far. I really loved doing it and I really like how it turned out. So yeah, I hope the Belgians think it's reflective of their beautiful plates. So now we're moving on to my calendar spread and the calendar page, I never really use a lot of information into it. It's really a place that I can just quickly look at, you know, and see where birthdays are and special events, things like that. So the boxes, I don't need to have very large. So these ones I've just done three grid spaces wide and five grid spaces deep. And I've kind of moved them to the center of my page. And then I've worked my artwork sort of in a cluster around it, which I think turned out really nicely. Um, and what I've chosen to put on this spread, I normally do the national animal, but the national animal for Belgium was the same as Norway's actually, which actually it's the same as a few countries. They all seem to have um, the lion, which is the sort of the coat of arms lion. So I just felt that I didn't really want to do the lion anyway. So I thought, hey, you know what? When I think of Belgium, I think of waffles and chocolate. So I'm gonna go with what my heart is telling me. I'm gonna do a spread that's focused on Belgian waffles and chocolate. <laughs> So to start, I thought I would do a little cluster of Belgian chocolate truffles um, on the right hand side and also have a spoon dripping in praline into one of the chocolate cups itself because I discovered that praline was actually invented by a Belgian chocolatier called Jean Newhouse and the Newhouse Chocolates Company is still going strong after, drum roll please, 164 years. Whoa, that's a lot of chocolate. And they're not the only chocolatier either. There is over 2,000 chocolatiers currently working in Belgium and they are creating up to 600,000 tons of chocolate a year. All this talk of chocolate is seriously making me want some. So I'm using my Prismacolor pencils in some rich chocolatey browns to color those chocolates in. And then I'm moving on to my waffles that I've positioned around the calendar. Now waffles, can you believe it? I have actually never had a waffle before. I know, you're shocked. I'm shocked. I can't believe I've gone 30 something years without having a waffle. So that's all gonna change. We're going on a date night to the Belgian Beer Cafe 
and I'm going to try waffles. So I'll let you know what I think of them. But if you wanted to know a little fact about waffles that I learnt, I learnt that there is two types of Belgian waffles. You probably thought there was just the one, but there's actually two. One is the Brussels waffle and one is the Liege waffle. And the Brussels one is the more commonly known one. It's more recognisable, it's more rectangular and the holes in it are quite perfectly made. They're perfectly square. Whereas the Liege waffles, they're a bit more um, oval shaped, less perfect, and they contain little sugar chunks through the dough. Whereas the Brussels ones just sprinkled with icing sugar. So both sound quite delicious. I'm not a huge sweet tooth, but right now all this talk of chocolate and waffles is definitely making me want something sweet. It was hard getting the waffles to look like waffles, but I just tried my best using the, just a cream and a couple of different browns. Um, and then I've just included the J in the top one and then just finished it off with a little bit of white gel pen. And then I always like to keep my YouTube growth here on this page as well. And then we were finished with that page and ready to move on to the next. Now this page, I decided to focus on Antwerp. Um, this is my needs and wants page, so I thought it had a pretty good sort of representation for that, being diamonds. Antwerp is straight away, I went to diamonds in my mind when I think of it. Um, so I wanted to kind of reflect the diamond industry. So I just sort of chose two diamond shapes to put my needs and my wants in. And then I've just chosen to draw little fragments of diamonds or the reflections of diamonds around the spread. It's very simple and kind of minimalist, which I like. I, I'm always attracted to those kind of spreads. I just have a hard time pulling back enough to do them. But yeah, I think this was just the right sort of blend of a bit of detail, but still quite minimal. So Antwerp has been a focus in the diamond industry since the 15th century. So kind of like the dominance of chocolate companies in Belgium, Antwerp is full of about 1500 companies that are dedicated to diamonds. So I found that really interesting that pretty much their the whole city is kind of entwined in this like diamond history. And they really sort of came on the map in 1456 when Ludwig van Birken invented the scaife, which is basically a tool that polishes diamonds into the sparkling multifaceted diamonds that we know today. So he transformed the industry and it's still, you know, highly regarded and, you know, so many diamonds go through there. Very interesting to learn about that. And I was really inspired by this building at the port of Antwerp. It's actually a building that's created to look like a diamond. Very impressive stuff. I'll see if I can squeeze that into my setup next week. I'm not sure if I can though, because there's a lot of content to try and get into these setups, but we shall see. And now the next page that I'm working on is my monthly meal planner. Now I pretty much stick to the same meals throughout the month. So I only need to have a few boxes that represent the week. And I just write down every lunch and every dinner that I plan on doing throughout the month. It helps me because it means you're really minimizing your shopping list and your sort of recipes are just kind of easy and it takes the trickiness out of preparing meals for families all the time. So yeah, I just needed the one page. So I thought I would focus this one on the national dish. I've done that in the past for most of my setups as well. So the national dish for Belgium, although it's unofficial, is moule frites, which is basically mussels in cooked in like a celery and onion base and then they're um, served with French fries, which interesting fact, the French did actually not um, invent the French fries apparently. It was Belgium who invented them. And the reason they're called French fries from what I read is that American soldiers during World War I had been tasting these fries and loved them so much, but they called them French fries because they actually thought they were in France because Belgians obviously speak French. Um, and actually I say obviously, but I didn't realize that half of the country speaks French and the other half speaks Dutch. Amazing. I really like the way I decided to sort of cascade the mussels and the frites around the page because I think it just gives that, that continuous minimal sort of feel to it. And also side note, I've never drawn mussels before, but if you are new at drawing, try to draw a muscle. It's so fun and really simple because you're just creating like a the muscle shape and then adding some swirls in and oh, I just found it really like relaxing to draw and who would have thought that drawing muscles would have turned out so pretty I'm really happy with how that page turned out and I've just added a little bit of color on there just using the pink 
I've actually used a pink texture, um, a marker, and then I've just used a little water to sort of blend it on the page. So just a little amount of water with your water-based texture and you can create a very light wash of color. So that's why I've used the pink and the yellow and just kept it very basic. But yeah, really nice how that page turned out. And now we're on to my favorite page of every month. I love doing portraits and this page here, my mind map page, I dedicate to a famous person from that country or someone born there or just someone representing their culture. So on the mind map page, I use this as my brain dump. I just don't like that word. So I've always used the terminology mind map. So yeah, this is where I'll throw ideas and I'll build things down on that page. So I just like to have a big blank section on one of the pages. And then the other page I fill with a portrait of usually a beautiful lady. And this month was no different. So initially I was looking through who was the famous celebrities that had been born in Belgian or who were Belgian. Um, one of the ones that came up who was actually born there was actually Audrey Hepburn. But because she is known for being British, I didn't feel right about using her in the spread, but I do love Audrey Hepburn and her essence and her style was always something that I loved. So then as I kept researching through, this one lady kept popping up and her name is Queen Paola of the Belgians. So she was queen from 1993 to 2013. And so her son is King Philippe, who is now the king. And I found a few pictures of when she was younger and she was just absolutely Absolutely stunning and there's one shot that made me think of Audrey Hepburn it sort of has that really elegant winged eyeliner that I love and you know just very elegant hair and jewelry it just had this beautiful like essence to it so I thought I would illustrate her on my mind map page and I always like to do my mind map pages the face and the skin part in realistic pencil drawing style and then on the outside, I keep it a lot more graphic and just use marker or fine liner in this case. Yeah, and then I thought I would intertwine her because she is representing this absolute beauty. I thought I would also include the national flower of Belgium, which is the red poppy. So I'm really happy with how this sort of drawing came together. I included the poppy as the lines of her shirt and her hat. So I thought that was a little bit cute, the way it was kind of entwined together and kind of working as one sort of entity. So yeah, let me know what you think of that. I've kept it once again, quite minimal with the colors this time. I didn't do the solid marker that I would normally do on these pages. It just felt too elegant and soft a picture to do any strong colored in areas. So what I did instead was still use that technique with the markers and I've just used a red marker with my watercolor brush and just painted it on softly to build some boldness in those flowers yet still having those soft edges. And here is the finished mind map spread ready for me to splurge all my messy handwriting on the other side. This next page is dedicated for my habit trackers. I like to call this spread my goodliness spread. So this is where I yeah, track all my habits and just the last month or so, I've decided to do individual calendars. I would normally do sort of a long bar graph kind of situation, but yeah, I'm just sort of varying it up and I'm still on this little calendar entry at the moment. So I wanted to illustrate some Smurfs on this page because I had no idea that Smurfs was originated in Belgium and by a Belgium comic. And I loved the Smurfs. I grew up on the Smurfs. And so it was really cool to, to discover that little piece of knowledge. So I couldn't do the setup without including them in it. So I found a way to include them with a couple of other things as well. Because the trouble is, you know, I want to try and show as much as I can of these countries and trying to just sort of organize it into certain pages, it gets tricky. So this one I combined a few elements onto this goodliness page. So we've got the Smurf, we've got Smurfette and Hefty Smurf and Hefty is actually holding up the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Now don't tell me off it's not that I'm doing Italy. There's actually a place in Belgium dedicated to mini Europe. It is like a theme park that has a whole bunch of all the European landmarks in it and all miniature in size. It sounds so cool and it looks awesome. 
you must have a look and if you ever get to Belgium oh it's definitely on my list the thought the thought of seeing it all in one space mainly because it's mini I just love little mini intricate things I think it would be so cool to see so the Smurfs were created by the Belgian comic artist Pierre Colourford in 1958 and then in the back I've put the structure that's actually right next door to the mini Europe as well it's a massive landmark building called the Atomium. So these are both found in Brussels and the Atomium was built in 1958 for the Brussels World Fair Expo, designed to look like a unit cell of an iron crystal, magnified at 165 billion times. But now it's a museum and in each of these steel spheres that are 18 meters in diameter, and they house galleries and function areas. And then the top sphere actually has a restaurant with panoramic views of Brussels. So it sounds incredible to see. Um, I, that would definitely be on my bucket list as well. So it's 102 meters tall and yeah, it looks amazing. Now for this spread, because there was a lot in it, three different sort of ideas in it, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible with the coloring. So I left it just as line drawings that I tried to do quite loosely um, and even with the Leaning Tower of Pisa the actual way I did that was really not hard it might look tricky to do to the naked eye at the end but if you actually watch the process of me doing it in real time it was just just scratching on some vertical lines for those pillars and then putting in some little cross hatching to represent some shaded areas like honestly it was not tricky to do that so I recommend trying that one as well if you're new to drawing and you just want to have a little go at sketching. And yeah, so as I said, I just stuck to fine liners mainly through this spread and then just used that same technique of using my textures with a little bit of water for the Smurf skin and Smurfette's hair. So yeah, kept it really simple and although it does, I feel it doesn't go with the rest of the pages very well, I'm happy with how it turned out still. And now on to my final page of this month's setup, which is the first weekly spread for the month and the year of 2021. Um, so this first week, I'm only going to set up from Friday to Sunday, so the first to the third. So I'm gonna leave the whole left page for that, which is where I write my little to-do lists for those days or my time blocking and you know my little checklists. That's where I put all that kind of information beneath each of the days of the week. So then I have the entire right hand page to do a little bit of artwork. So this one I thought I would do something that might be a little quirky to some of you if you're not familiar with Agatha Christie. So Agatha Christie is a murder writer and she's someone I've read for a long time and I also love the movies that they've created from her stories. Um, I grew up on them, my mum loved Agatha Christie novels and she got me into them early on. Well I say early on, I'm sure I was you know the right kind of age like maybe late teens <laughs> um, so I love Agatha Christie and one of her characters is the Belgian detective Hercule Poirot and so I thought I had to draw him and I wanted to include him somewhere in my pages because you know this is my journal and when I think of Belgium the first thing that came to my head was Hercule Poirot now once again I wanted to try and include two elements to this one so I thought I would um, attempt to draw Hercule Poirot in the style of René Magritte's artwork. René Magritte was a surrealist Belgian artist and I actually studied him back when I was um, in high school doing visual arts. I've actually always loved surrealism and a lot of his paintings I studied in school and really really liked them. They're just really quirky and strange and there's quite a few of them. He would illustrate a man in a top hat and like a black jacket. Um, which Hercule Poirot is always known to dress very suavely. And so I thought I could use that idea and put him into one of the paintings or something similar. So he always has, um, so I've decided to draw Hercule Poirot in front of a mirror that has a lot of sky clouds in it and then have a faceless reflection basically of him in his top hat and his jacket. But that's the only parts you see in the reflection. So a little bit odd and a little bit quirky, but I like that it's got that reference to René Magritte without being a blatant reproduction of one of his artworks. And in terms of what I used to create this piece, I 
used a piece of toned paper that I had in a separate notebook and just cut that down to size. Then did my sketch on top of that. Then using my black fine liner, outlined all the sketch and then just filled in some areas using a black marker um, so that the gray of the jacket stays as the toned paper and the skin is also the toned paper. So I'm just coloring in the black areas and then some of the white areas with a white gel pen. And then the final thing was to use my Posca paint pens as the sky elements for the clouds in the sky. Um, I did that because I needed to use something opaque on the toned paper. I could have used pencil, but I didn't really want to go into that much detail. I just kind of wanted to a simple graphic sky look to it. So by using those paint pens, I was able to just throw it on quite quickly and get the desired effect basically. Um, and then I've just stuck a little bit of washi tape on it because it was starting to look a little bit bland without any sort of additional stuff. So I just sort of decorated a bit more by adding some washi tape and then used a silver across the other side to tie in that silver element. And then that is the final piece, how it turned out and the final pages of our setup. So we'll go back and have a quick flip through and please remember to like this video and share it with a friend who you think might be interested in learning more about Belgium. So I hope you enjoyed watching me set up the first month of 2021 in this journal. I really enjoy looking into these countries and I hope you enjoy watching them and hopefully you learned a little bit as well. I sure did. And I'm looking forward to creating the rest of my weekly pages next week in the journal and we'll still be on that Belgium theme so if you haven't subscribed and you want to be notified of when my video goes live just click that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you know when it's ready to watch and we'll see what else we can find and discover about Belgium next week thanks for watching guys and I will see you soon bye bye